जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंदा जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा जय चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय चंद्र जय गौर भक्त महाप्रभु एज श्री कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड एंड द लॉर्ड नित्यानंदा एज बलराम the first expansion of krishna then in the 12th and the 13th verses he describes advaita acharya who is another principal associate of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and an incarnation of mahavishnu thus advaita acharya is also the lord or more precisely an expansion of the lord the word advaita means non dual and his name is such because he is non different from the supreme lord he is also called acharya teacher because he disseminated krishna consciousness in this way he is just like chitanya mahaprabhu although lord chitanya is shri krishna himself he appeared as a devotee to teach people in general how to love krishna similarly although advaita acharya is the lord he appeared just to distribute the knowledge of krishna consciousness thus he is also the lord incarnated as devotee so who is lord chaitanya yes it's lord shiva yesterday we heard that the advaita acharya yeah he is an incarnation yes. of mahavishnu and sadashiva yeah both mahavishnu as well as sadashiva so because he is mahavishnu he is the supreme lord himself oh. that's what is being pointed out here so he is god himself but he is in the mood of a devotee and he is teaching us how to become devotees and that's why he is called acharya what's the meaning of acharya teacher one who teaches yeah teaches by example so he's he's a, a teacher and he's teaching by his example exemplary example and who's lord chaitanya he is krishna himself krishna himself yeah. yeah and he came why does he come as a devotee to show us how by example to and love how, and how love, to serve krishna how to and how krishna. to love krishna by an example as a devotee that's right yes how lord to surrender chaitanya. right it was Yes. In the yesterday, they said that he came to show us that how do you surrender to Krishna right. because people had forgotten after Bhagavad Gita. So that's right. So he came that to show by an example that how to surrender and how to love Krishna yes. and serve Krishna. That's right. Yes, that's why Lord Chaitanya, who's Krishna himself, he came to show us this. And Lord Nityananda, he is Balram. Lord Balaram. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. That's right. Okay. In the But past see, time. Twenty-four. Sorry. Uh, one question. In the twenty-four incarnations of 
of Krishna, of Vishnu, but it doesn't mention about Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is a Channa avatar. He is Channa uh, avatar. Right? He is a Channa, word in okay. incarnation. Yeah, yeah, Gupta, right? Because, Gupta avatar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why he is also like when Gargamani says to Nanda Maharaj that your son appears three yuga in three yugas. Because in the Kalyog, he comes in the form of a devotee. He does not declare himself that I am God. But mm -hmm. he says, I'm a devotee of God. Why? Just to show us how to serve and to lo uh, love Krishna, how to become a devotee. So he's Chana a Chana Avatar. Avatar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In the past and time of Lord Chaitanya. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry and that's sorry, why even I'm sorry. sorry, even Bhagavatam, that's why uh, the verse which predicts the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, he says uh, that he is a Krishna, that he's he's Krishna himself, but he's not blackish. He comes in a golden complexion. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, in the past Daniel. times of Lord Chaitanya, in the past times of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna is manifested in five different features, known as the Panchatattva. To whom Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj offer his obeisances in the 14th verse of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Krishna and his associates appear as devotees of the Supreme Lord in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Gadadhar Prabhu, and Sri Nivas Prabhu. In all cases, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the source of energy for all his devotees. Since this is the case, if you, if we can take shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the successful execution of Krishna consciousness, we are sure to make progress. In the devotional song, Narottam Das Thakur sings, My dear Lord Chaitanya, please have mercy upon me. There is no one who is as merciful as you. My plea is most urgent because your mission is to deliver all the fallen souls and no one is more fallen than I. Therefore, I beg priority. So the Pancha Tattva, the Lord Chaitanya, that's Krishna himself, that's God himself, Nityananda Prabhu, he is Balaramji, so he's the expansion. Advaita Acharya, he's Mahavishnu, so he's incarnation. Gadadhar Prabhu, Gadadhar Pandit, he's the internal energy because he's an incarnation of Srimati Radharani. And Srivas Thakur, he, is, he represents the jivas. He is an incarnation of Narad Muni. So he represents the jiva. And this is called Panchatattva. And this Panchatattva is complete God. God, his expansion, his incarnation, his internal energy, and the jivas. Yeah? This is how we can understand. Complete form of the Supreme Lord. So the Lord, his devotees, his incarnation, his expansions, everything is the Supreme Lord. Yes. And then here we are hearing Narottam Das Thakur is saying that you have come, your Patita Pavan, you have come to deliver the fallen souls. So Narottam Das Thakur is taking a very humble position and saying, there is no more fallen than me. So you please kindly consider my case the first. Therefore, I beg priority, he says. With verse 15, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami begins offering his obeisances directly to Krishna himself. Krishna Das Kaviraj was an inhabitant of Vrindavan and a great devotee. He had been living with his family in Katwa, a small town in the district of Burdwan in Bengal. He worshipped Radha Krishna with his family. And once, when there was some misunderstanding among his family members about devotional service, he was advised by Nityanand Prabhu in a dream to leave home and go to Vrindavan. Although he was very old, he started out that very night and went to live in Vrindavan. While he was there, he met some of the six Goswamis 
the principal disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was requested to write the Chaitanya Charitamrit by the devotee of Vrindavan. Although he began this work at a very old age, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, he finished it. Today, it remains the most authoritative book on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu philosophy and life. Prabhupada is just giving a small introduction to the author, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And he's saying, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he was a great devotee of the Lord. He was living in Katwa in Bengal. Uh, he was a great devotee. He was a disciple of Nityananda Prabhu. But there was uh, his brother. His brother had offended a devotee. And so Krishna Das Kaviraj was not happy about that. And in that same night, Nityananda Prabhu came to him in a dream and said, you leave home. You go to Vrindavan. You go meet the six Goswamis. So he went there. He met with the six Goswamis and everybody requested him to write the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He was almost 90 or something. So at such an advanced age, he started to write this book. By the, he, like we, we read earlier like how he goes to Madan Mohan Temple, takes the, takes the permission of the Lord, takes the permission of all the de devotees before he starts writing. I hear Prabhupada is mentioning it here. When Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was living in Vrindavan, there were not very many temples. At that time, the three principal temples were those of Madhan Mohan, Govindevji, and Gopinath. As a resident of Vrindavan, Krishna Das Kaviraj offers his respects to the deities in these temples and requests God's favor. My progress in spiritual life is very slow, so I am asking your help. In the 15th verse of Chaitanya Charitamrit, Krishna Das offers his obeisances to the Madan Mohan Bhikra, the deity who can help us progress in Krishna consciousness. In the, exec in the execution of Krishna consciousness, our first business is to know Krishna and our relationship with him. To know Krishna is to know oneself and to know oneself is to know one's relationship with Krishna. Since this relationship can be learned by worshipping the Madan Mohan Vigraha. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami first established his relationship with him. So, does anyone remember the Madan Mohan deity is established by who? Madan Mohan. Is it Sanatan? Yes. Sanatan right. Goswami. That's right. Yes, Madan Mohan is established by Sata, San, uh, Sanatan Goswami and Govindaji. Rupa Goswami. That's right. And Gopina? Jeeva. Jeeva Goswami? Raghunath Das no. Goswami. Raghunath. Okay. Sorry. So the Madan Mohan deity, he establishes Avasambandha relationship. This is what Prabhupada is saying. You know, our relationship with Krishna, our sambandha, sambandha gyan. It's very important to know and understand our relationship with Krishna. Prabhupada is saying, to know Krishna is to know oneself. And to know oneself is to know one's relationship with Krishna. You know, we think we are independent of Krishna. But self-realization and God-realization happens together. Why? Because we are part and parcel of Krishna. So to understand this relationship, this is the Sambandha Gyan. So, and Sanatan Goswami, he is the Acharya of Sambandha Gyan. Madan Mohan deity establishes. So that's why Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he is also praying to Madan Mohan deity. So this is important. To know Krishna is to know oneself and to know oneself is to know one's relationship with Krishna. To understand ourself in relationship with Krishna. Then we will be able to know ourselves. Otherwise, we will not be able to know ourselves. Okay. 
well this established in the 16th verse krishna thus offers his obeisances to the functional deity govinda the govinda deity is called the functional deity because he shows us how to serve radha and krishna the madan mohan deity simply establishes that i am your eternal servant with govinda however there is actual acceptance of service govinda resides eternally in vrindavan in the spiritual world of vrindavan the buildings are made of touch stone the cows are known as surabhi cows givers of abundant milk and the trees are known as the wish pulling fulfilling trees for they yield whatever one desires in vrindavan krishna herds the surabhi cows and he is worshiped by hundreds and thousands of gopis cowherd girls who are all goddesses of fortune when krishna descends to the material world the same vrindavan descends with him just as an entourage accompanies an important personage because when krishna comes his land also comes vrindavan is considered to exist beyond the material world therefore devotees take shelter of the vrindavan in india or it is considered to be a replica of the original vrindavan although one may complain that no kalpa vriksha wish fulfill wish fulfilling trees exist there when the six goswamis were there kalpa vriksha were present it is not that one can simply go to such a tree and make demands one must first become a devotee the goswamis would live under a tree for one night only and the trees would satisfy all their desires for the common man this may all seem very wonderful but as one makes progress in the devotional service all this can be realized so once the relationship is established that i am eternal servant of krishna that is sambandha gyan then what does one do one uh, works in that relationship that is abhideya that's devotional service and that is established by govinda ji the deity govinda and that's where rupa goswami is called the acharya of abhideya acharya of devotional service of how to be situated in that relationship how to you know because if we are, if the sambandha is established i'm eternal servant of krishna then the next thing comes okay so what do i do ah then engage in devotional service so that is abhideya the the entire vedas the entire vedas explain these three things sambandha abhideya and prayojana what's my relationship with god uh how do i act in that relationship and to be situated in that relationship love of krishna that is the prayojana that's the goal so then propad points out that brahma samhita brahma samhita brahma ji says and the so many scriptures that describe a golok vrindavan it's made of chintamani this kalpa vriksha desire wish fulfilling trees anything you ask from the tree the tree will get sura abhi cows they give unlimited amount of milk so we'll say oh but when we are going to vrindavan we don't see kalpa vriksha we don't see sura abhi we do not see the goddesses of fortune krishna is worshiped by millions of goddesses of fortune so we may say that but do we have the spiritual eyes to see the real vrindavan or is it that our mind and intelligence is so covered by our material desires that we are unable to see the truth you know just like if the window is dirty if our window is dirty we will not be able to see clearly outside but once the window is clean then we can clearly see the beautiful scenery so because our we are covered we are unable to see the real vrindavan uh, but devotees the devotees they can see the pure devotees they can see when prabhupad was taken to new york he was in new york and they were in the streets of new york the devotees were feeling bad that prabhupad has to see all this dirt and filthy places of the streets of new york prabhupad said oh i don't see all that i am in vrindavan always so that's the pure devotee and prabhupad is pointing out that the six goswamis for them these trees were like the, they were the kalpa vriksha because they completely in vrindavan consciousness we can't imitate it 
you know, because we are not there as yet. We can simply hear about such such great personalities, engage in devotional service, and gradually we may be able to understand it. Vrindavan is actually experienced. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. Vrindavan is actually experienced as it is by persons who have stopped trying to derive pleasure from material enjoyment. When will my mind become cleansed of all hankering for material enjoyment? So I will be able to see Vrindavan, one great devotee asked. The more Krishna consciousness we become, more Krishna conscious we become, and the more we advance, the more everything is revealed as spiritual. Thus, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami considered the Vrindavan in India to be as good as the Vrindavan in the spiritual sky. And in the 16th verse of the Chitane Charitamrit, he describes Radharani and Krishna as seated beneath a wish push fulfilling tree in Vrindavan on a throne decorated with valuable jewels. There, Krishna, there, Krishna's dear gopi friends serve Radha and Krishna by singing, dancing, offering betel nuts and refreshments and decorating their lordship with flowers. Even today in India, people decorate, swinging thrones and recreate the scene during the month of July and August. Generally, at that time, people go to Vrindavan to offer their respect to the deities there. So, and then Prabhupada is pointing out that um, how can we experience Vrindavan? You know, like when we wear red color glasses, we'll see everything red. Green color glasses, we'll see everything green. And if we are looking for something red outside, we will be able to see those red things we will point out. We tend to ignore everything else. We are looking for something green outside. We will see the green things. Our attention goes there and we ignore everything else. So till the time we are trying to seek pleasure in the material world, we are unable to see the spiritual world. So Prabhupada is saying the great, one of a great devotee, he prays that when will I be able to see Vrindavan when my mind is completely pure of all this material hankering? So the more we become Krishna conscious, the more everything is revealed as spiritual. It's just how our consciousness is. Right now we are thinking everything is material, is for my enjoyment. So we are seeing everything as material. The pure devotee, for him, he's seeing the spiritual world everywhere. Because the spiritual world is unlimited. He is always with Krishna. He's always in Vrindavan. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying that Radha and Krishna are there beneath the Kalpa Vriksha. They are sitting on a throne of valuable jewels and they are being served by the gopis. So we have this somewhere near Janmashtami, this festival the, where they are put Jula on a swing. Julan Yatra. Yeah. Julan right. Yatra. Yeah. yeah. The Julan Yatra is there. It's very beautifully celebrated. So let me just say, sorry. Yeah. Finally, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami offers his blessings to his readers in the name of Gopinath deity. Who is Krishna as master and proprietor of the gopis? When Krishna played upon his flute, all the gopis or cowherd girls were attracted by the sound and left their household duties. And when they came to him, he danced with them. These activities are all described in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. These gopis were childhood friends of Krishna and many were married. For in India, the girls are generally married by the age of 12. The boys, however, are not married before 18. So Krishna, who was 15 or 16 at that time, was not married nonetheless. He called these girls from their home and invited them to dance with him. The dance is called the Rasalila dance. And it is the most elevated of all the Vrindavan pastimes. Krishna is therefore called Gopinath because he is the beloved master of the gopis. 
So then Prabhupada is pointing out that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is offering blessings to the readers in the name of Gopinath. Who's Gopinath? Gopinath is the master of the gopis. Krishna as Gopinath, the master of the gopis. So. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami petitioned the blessing of Lord Gopinath. May that Gopinath, the master of the gopis, Krishna bless you. May you become blessed by Gopinath. The author of the Chaitanya Charitamrit prays that just as Krishna attracted the gopis by the sweet sound of his flute, he will also attract the reader's mind by the transcendental vibration. So this is a great blessing by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami to all the readers. He's saying as the gopis are attracted by the flute, of Krishna and they go running to the forest to meet Krishna. He is giving a benediction to all the readers that by the transcendental vibration, our minds may be attracted to Krishna, attracted to Gopinath by reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita, by reading the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. One question, is Narottama Das Thakur same as a Haridas Thakur? No. They're different Not personalities. The same, different? No. Okay. Yeah. Haridas Thakur was there in the past Always times of with, Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, because he, he would was, be with Nityan and Prabhu, right? Going to that's right. places to... That's, okay. Yes. Um, when we okay. continue reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, we are going to read about him. There is a good portion about him and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Haridas Thakur. Narottam Das Thakur, he came after Lord Chaitanya had left the world. You know, so, oh, and he, okay. he is a great devotee of the Lord and he, saw, he wrote a lot of bhajans. A lot of the bhajans that we sing that are sung by Nar uh, yeah, Narottam Das Thakur. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Haridas Thakur, we'll, again, when we re, re continue reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, we'll read about him. Haridas so, Thakur. So, shall we stop here for today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I just wanted to say just one thing yes. that what uh, you were asking about Narottam Das Thakur, what we read about the Krishna Das Kaviraj that he has described that it's a beautiful place in Vrindavan and the Kalpa Bhakshya tree and the gopis are fanning and they are serving the beetle man. It is the bhajan. Radha Krishna Pran Mura Jugalaki Shur Jeeva Namara Nigati Arina Himur Maybe you can share it with us on the morning chat. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll share the bhajan. It's a beautiful bhajan that's describing. Yeah. And that's by Narottam Das Thakur. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.